it about the scoring or the explosive plays? Because they score a lot of points and run the ninth least amount of plays. In the <laughs> yeah, the two go hand in hand. Um, you know, it's it, there's we're looking. Uh, there's not a ton of red zone stuff. You know, because they're scoring from so far away. They still don't have a great grasp of who they are identity wise in the red zone because that just hasn't been uh, necessary for them. Which I think is a good problem to have if you're an offensive coordinator. What is it about the Riley brothers that make them so successful offensive minds? I think they're really smart. I think they're sharp in what they do. They believe in what they do. Um, and let's face it, I mean, they're really good players. You know, that always helps too. I don't know if you could uh, – sometimes it's about the Jimmys and Joes a little bit uh, also. But uh, I think they do a great job of being creative and in, in, uh, finding different ways to get those guys the ball, get those guys touches, get those guys open. Um, and then, of course, when you got a quarterback that's a great facilitator, I think it makes things uh, so much more smooth. Duggan done differently this year than in three times past you played. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he's just playing with a lot of confidence. I think he's uh, um, there's not a lot of slowdown in the things that he's doing. I think he's making decisions and going with them, and um, and uh, and he's healthy. You know, I think that's a thing that's uh, kind of been his uh, uh, downfall over the years too. Is he, he runs the ball so much and, and he runs so hard, he takes he takes pounding. And uh, there's been years in the past where he hadn't been the same at the end of the year as he is in the beginning sometimes. And, and uh, right now he's, he's healthy and he's, he's playing fast. TCU was Felix's kind of big game last year. Is, is he on the upward swing from what he was dealing with a couple weeks ago? Yeah, that's been a, a kind of work in progress all year. But he's been, he's been practicing uh, great. And, and uh, yeah, I think he's about as healthy as he's been uh, uh, for a while. Speaking of health, Khalid Duke, Coach Kleiman said he was going to practice on Tuesday. Kind of where is he at? Yeah, he's on track, too. He's been uh, um, going through the week, uh, getting more and more reps each day. A guy like Josh Hayes, um, seemed like he had a head start coming in because he knew you guys at North Dakota State. But looking back, just how, how did he hit the ground running? Uh, he, yes and no. I mean, he knew what to expect from me. He knows what to expect from Coach Kleiman. Um, totally different system. Um, a lot of different terminology. Uh, we tried to kind of marry the two. So there's some things that he understands. Uh, totally different position. I mean, he was a corner. That's a whole other way of seeing the game. You know, a player is not a player is not a player. I mean, he's uh, seeing it from a corner's eyes and seeing it from a safety's eyes are way different ends of the spectrum. And so, um, kudos to him for all the things that he's done, just uh, adjusting, because it's been extraordinarily seamless. I mean, he's just an incredible student of the game. He's up here working all the time on, on his stuff, and um, we can put him in any situation. He just kind of takes it and smiles. You know, you want to go play man coverage against their best guy, no problem. You want me to be in the box in the run fit, no problem. You want to use me as a blitzer, no problem. Um, just we're so lucky to have him. Well, you mentioned Quentin Johnson a little bit ago, but is he a bigger problem before the catch or after the catch? <laughs> It depends on where he's catching it. Yeah, um, you know, obviously uh, the vertical stuff is is scary because of his length, and I think he he's, he's got good speed and he does a great job of creating separation on corners or whomever and uh, and going up and getting it. But uh, yeah, likewise after the catch on some of the even some of the jet sweep things that he does, he's not an easy guy to bring down. Um, and uh, so yeah, he, he's you are gonna have to have bodies around him uh, quite a bit. Is there a slot guy or a bit as dangerous as their big yeah, I, uh, perimeter guy? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, they, they, they've, and, and it's, uh, there's multiple. I mean, there's, yeah, they, I think uh, receiver wise, this might be the best core uh, potential in the Big 12. I don't I haven't seen everybody yet, but they're, they're very, very good. Because of those receivers, does it place an even more emphasis on guys like Omar Daniels, VJ Payne, Jacob Parrish this week to kind of step up and have bigger games? Yeah, and, and they, you know, not a lot of uh, what we call 10 personnel. Uh, throughout the league, you know, four receivers in the game at the same time. I think most of the teams in the league uh, generally will have a tight end out there. They might be in the same formations, but there'll be a tight end body out there somewhere. These guys will do some stuff with four receivers, which a lot of teams won't do. So probably forces us at times to, to match personnel a little bit also. Uh, you, you know, you're not going to uh, be comfortable sticking a linebacker out there or a, or a safety even. Uh, you might have to get some more of those type of bodies out there sometimes. Given up 16.7 points per game and have held every opponent underneath their scoring average so far this season. How good has this defense been? Um, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm probably the worst guy in the country at, at looking at statistics and those kind of things. Um, I, I look at it as a bottom line of execution or not, and I think each play has its as an identity of its own, um, a life of its own, and. Uh, I guess what I'm most interested in is is us just executing. And what my job, I think, is as a coordinator is to put 
guys in competitive situations and then just trust that they're going to get things done. And if, and if I can do that, I think we've got a good enough team to, to win a lot of those competitive situations. So um, we're, we're still a work in progress. Um, I don't want to uh, start patting myself on the back or anything like that uh, at all. We've got a big, big, you know, big batch of games coming up here. But um, I'm happy. Our guys love football. They, they work their tails off every day. And, um, and it's just it's a great group to be around on a daily basis. Are there any key stats you do look at at the end of every game? Um, I, 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 to be honest, I, I look at, uh, uh, I like to look at our third down percentage, um, and uh, and I like to look at uh, the points, and uh, <laughs> you know that's it. I, I don't, uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really get mixed all that much up in yards or you know who had the most tackles or I, I really don't. I, I, I probably should. Um, I think uh, I got other fish to fry sometimes. Um, you know, I, I'm going to do the best I can uh, Sunday through Saturday morning and then uh, let those guys sort it out on Saturday and whatever happens, happens. And, and uh, you know, certainly we look at things to try to find ways to improve and where we're struggling and those kind of things. But I think some of that stuff just presents itself on the tape. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, we've, we've done a decent job of uh, changing and adapting uh, week to week, and we're going to continue to do that. Anyone in the, the bye week that can maybe help you guys out a little bit more in the second half of the season that maybe didn't in the first? It was good. I, I don't know that anybody will step into a massive role off of the bye week, but I think that, that we got a lot of positive um, reinforcement on some things we thought about some of our young guys, um, you know, guys like Jake Clifton and VJ Payne and Gavin Forche, new, not a young guy per se, but new to the program and uh, just continuing to push those guys along. That was a huge week for us uh, uh, last week in, in particular. Mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be 15 to 20 mile per hour winds, maybe gusts into the 30s. How much does that affect an opposing passing game, and does that then impact how you want to defend that? It does, absolutely. Uh, I don't know. It, you know, sometimes you, you get those high wind conditions, and uh, you don't necessarily feel it on the field. You know, I, I, um, sometimes I'm out there at, at the bill, and I'm looking at those flags over there, and they're going that way, and these flags over here are going that way. And I couldn't tell you, you know, they're telling me the wind's going uh, to the left and my shirt's going to the right. And um, I, I don't know. I think that's just a feel thing for the field. Uh, certainly it's something that has to go into a play caller's mind, I would think, uh, both offensively and defensively. I mean, would you look at that maybe as more zone so the guys can keep an eye on where it's, the ball yeah, is? Possibly. Um, you know, I, in, in today's uh, day and age, the pass game isn't all down the field passes. You know, sometimes some of these uh, passes are, are short and easily completable if you're in a hurricane. And uh, so I don't, uh, you know, it, it depends on kind of how the flow of the game is going. Uh, that's probably a bigger factor than the weather. Has Austin Moore taken some of the load from Daniel Green, at linebacker? Um, from, a, from a leadership role, not necessarily snaps per se, because they don't play the same position, but from a, oh, for, oh yeah, having, uh, absolutely. I, I would say, Austin's been as consistent of a player that we've had on defense um, at any position. Uh, he's just a, kind of an under the radar guy that just gets the job done every time. And, and I'm so proud of him and his journey and where he is. And um, I'm, 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 you know, every, I think everybody looks to him as an example of how things uh, should be and, and what a K-State player is. What do you think Come Desmond more. Purnell did best when he went in there last week? I, I thought that he didn't uh, uh, didn't panic at all. I mean, stage wasn't too big for him. You know. Uh, We've been comfortable with Des, you know, from the outset of the season, you know, knowing that he was going to have to, to take some snaps off of Khalid Duke and, and uh, you know, was going to have to have a role for us. You know, we didn't know that that role was going to be 65 plays uh, consecutively. Um, you know, and, and he made uh, uh, made a bunch of plays, but he, he made a couple mistakes and he didn't panic. You know, he just went back out there confidently and kept fighting, and he played a really good, uh, really good uh, game, especially uh, in the second half. Felix was named a, a mid-season All-American by like four different publications. How impressive is it that he has been able to produce the way he has this year, considering the secret is obviously out on him and he has been 100% healthy? Yeah, there. that's uh, it, it, a testament to him just in his relentlessness and, and how he plays the game and how he approaches the game. And, you know, he was really, really hurting, uh, especially toward the end of the game at Iowa State. And he still had some plays where he looked really explosive and you know he'd come to the sideline and could barely walk and then he'd go back out there and just uh, play his tail off and you know I'm I'm really proud of him and he deserves everything he gets